All right, so we finished combinational logic design part one, where we looked at decoders, encoders, uh, tri-state buffers. Now in part two, we will be looking at some other combinational logic components that are very useful. We will start today with multiplexers, which I particularly like. Uh, and then we will go on to demultiplexers, which sort of do the opposite job or demux. And then uh, we will also talk about adders and comparators. But that will mainly be through homework, the, the, the two videos that are uh, supposed to be like a homework assignment. We'll begin with uh, a mux. Why do people like muxes so much? Well, I do. I don't know why others do. I just do because uh, I find them extremely useful, mainly because I can implement any logic function with a mux. Uh, and I find that to be a very elegant solution um, to do multiple things. So the, at the surface, uh, it might be doing a very simple job, but uh, it, it's it's more to it than just you know selecting one in one out of many. Right. So that's that's a mux. What is it used for? It is used to select one from many. So let me write the answers here in red. What is it used for? A mux. It is used to select one data input from many, usually a power of two, data inputs. So you can think of it as a many to one component. Many inputs, one output. Uh, <laughs> All right, I, it looks like I'm selling the idea of a mux pretty hard. All right, I'm going to lay off a little bit on the selling part. Uh, let's let's see w what is a mux used for to select one input from many inputs. Uh, <laughs> what are its inputs? There are two types of inputs actually. One is, of course, the data input. But to be able to select uh, from data inputs, you also need select inputs. Now, let me ask you guys one simple question. How many bits do I need to select one from four choices. If you have four things and I need to select one of them, I need two bits, right? So I would need two select inputs to select one out of four data inputs. Uh, so the function select in the studio was a mux. Absolutely right, Bennett. Function select is a mux. Uh, there is a mux in the LED display component. So there, there is a there is multiplexer design uh, already <laughs> in many of your studios, at least for the files that are uh, made available to you. But hopefully after this discussion, you will be able to write your own um, your own marks. So there, what what are it input? Two different types of inputs. One is data inputs and select inputs. What are its outputs? Well, you selected one from many data uh, data inputs. So the output should be one uh, of the data inputs. Now let's talk about the symbol. Many to one based on select lines. So what I can do is I can uh, use D for data inputs, 
maybe I can use F for output, one output, and I'm going to call the inputs as D0, D1, D2, and D3. Those are four data inputs. And I have two um, select lines here, and I can call them S1 and S0. Maybe I can, I can label them in blue just to differentiate S1 and S0. Now S1 and S0 can be in one of four configurations, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So S1 and S0, if they are 0, 0, then D0 goes through. If it is 0, 1, D1 goes through. If it is 1, 0, D2 goes through. D3 goes through when the select lines are both high. Now, D0, D1, D2, D3, what could they be? Well, these could be variables. These could be expressions. These could be direct zero or direct one, logic low or logic one, right? So you have uh, plenty of options uh, to connect. What can you connect to the input of these muxes? Well, you can have a logic expression, you can have just a straightforward zero or one. Uh, so each of these data inputs can be uh, any one of these. F is your data output. Now, once we get to that symbol, uh, by the way, this is a symbol for four inputs, one output. So it's a symbol for a four is to one mux. And you will find muxes in two is to one, four is to one, uh, eight is to one, 16 is to one, and so on. Those are the typical sizes. Or in general, you can say two raised to n to one. By the way, in this, what would be n? If I say 2 raised to n to 1, what would n indicate for that size mux? Uh, no, no, the general one. If I say 2 raised to n to 1, what is that n signifying? Uh, the number of select lines, right? Number of select lines. So suppose you had three select inputs, then you would have an eight is to one mux, right? So of course, to select one out of eight, you need three select lines. You need four is to one, then you need two select lines. So n is sort of representing the number of select lines in the general form, two raised to n to one. Now, quick question. What if you wanted to select one out of five things, one out of five inputs, what do you do then? One out of five, how do you do it? There are several answers to this, <laughs> panic. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys are in an extremely good mood today. All right, uh, don't use all these. Okay, so that would be, that would mean that you are trying to use the eight is to one max, but you're not using all the eight inputs. So that's one solution that works. Uh, can you guys think of some other solution maybe? Uh, chain small, I like panic. <laughs> Here, you need to select one out of five, right? So how about you use a four is to one max and a two is to one max. You s there it is. You're right. So you can select uh, 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 one out of the four and then you can use the next marks to select between the output of this guy and the fifth input. You guys see that? So you, you have sort of many ways to do that selection and we'll explore um, ideas like this uh, as we go on. Uh, it's like binary counting. Exactly right. Well, binary counting is 
you know applicable but you may not need to do it with those many muxes uh, there might be a simpler option like this right over here we had a 4 is to 1 then we had a 2 is to 1 and we are done but now if you had a 6 is to 1 then we cannot do this then we would have a 4 is to 1 then a 2 is to 1 then select one out of the, those two outputs so you'd have to adjust based on uh, the number of inputs that are coming in uh, but 8 is to 1 marks would be a, the simplest uh, solution there. All right, let me erase this and talk about what are some of the statements we can write about the 4 is to 1 symbol. Uh, why can't, wait, why can't we daisy chain for a 6 is to 1? Uh, so if you want to do a daisy chain for 6 is to 1, then you need to use a 4 is to 1 then another 4 is to 1. That you can do. But you cannot do it like 2 here, right? Because you would have to have one. This is selecting one and this guy. 1, 2, 3, 4 and then fifth guy here. You see that? Alright. Uh... I want to write some statements about the symbol. So what I will do is, I will uh, say, when S1 equals S0 equals 0, what would be the output F? What would be the output F? Uh, Bennett says D0. Absolutely right. Uh, when S1 is 0 and S1 is 1, uh, sorry, S0 is 1, uh, what would be F? D1. And you guys get the idea here. F is D2 and the last one. S1 is 1 and S0 is also 1. And in that case, F will be D3, right? So that's uh, sort of the four statements that would uh, dictate that that would describe what that mux is actually doing uh, a few more uh, uh, quick uh, points about the mux traditionally you draw a trapezoid shape but some books will have a rectangle shape all you need to worry about is many inputs on one side one output on the other side that's it but usually your uh, select lines will appear at the top of that trapezoid or at the bottom of the trapezoid. Also something to note here. I like to be very consistent in terms of the order in which I write my select lines. So the order I follow is most significant select is to the left. So I write most significant over here, all the way down to least significant over here. So if I stay consistent with this, uh, then it I don't e really have to worry about the ordering scheme here. Okay, let's move on to designing a two is to one marks. So let's try to talk about the two is to one marks symbol. Let's talk about its truth table. Let's talk, do some simplification with the K map. My goal is to touch these three, uh, these four, these three things: truth table, K map, logic diagram. I want to be able to. Oh my gosh. <laughs> guys, I'm not even trying here. It's just all right. So the symbol for a two is to one marks is as shown. Uh, let's let's try to write the description here. What would be the description here? Let's do that in red. Uh, the select line S can either be a 0 or be a 1. right? So if S is 0, what would be F? If select line is low, then A goes through. right? We're selecting 1 out of 2. You have selected A. And when select line is 1, 
you have selected B, F is B. Now based on this description, actually we can fill out the truth table. So let's take a look. S is zero. I've just arbitrarily chosen the order of my inputs this way. S, A, B. You could change it uh, depending on what you like. But I just I just chose this because it is going to make things a little bit simpler for me to go from the description to the truth table. So S is zero, F is A. So where is S zero for the first four rows? So if S is zero there, F should equal A. A is zero zero one one. So F should be zero zero one one. For the next four, S is 1. When S is 1, F equals B. If F, so that B is what? 0, 1, 0, 1. All right, 0, 1, 0, 1. Maybe I can highlight uh, this guy here and this guy here to get that and that. 0, 1, 0, 1. Yes. Done with the symbol. Done with the description. Done with the truth table. Now let's try to see. Because I want to actually draw the logic diagram for this 2 is to 1 marks. My goal is to find out what logic gates go inside this symbol. In order to do that, I just don't want to do it in a canonical manner. I want to do it in the simplest manner. So what I'll do is I'll try to use a K-map that will give me the simplest SOP for the 2 is to 1 marks. So I will use, uh, for example, I'll use S here, A here, and B here. S, A, B, S, A, B. And then I can try to fill out for F. What is F? 0, 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 0, 1. Guys agree with that? Next, we can box things up. A group of two here, simplest. A group of two here, simplest. There is an RPI term. So there is a hazard possible, uh, right, you're right. So should we don't do RPI, right? I'm just looking at the simplest one. I'm ignoring any uh, static hazard that is clearly possible over here. So what would be the expression for F? For the, for the vertical group, I have S complement and A or S and B. You guys see that? Now let's try to see if this um, logic expression actually makes sense with the description. When S is zero, A goes through when S is 1, B goes through, right? So S is appearing in its true and complemented form with either A or B. And if it is 0, A will go through. If it is 1, B will go through, right? So let's try to finish this up with a logic diagram. Logic diagram for 2 is to 1 marks. Uh, what was the logic diagram? Uh, what was the expression? F equals S complement and A or S and P. So what I'll do is I will use a, a slightly different way uh, to draw logic diagrams. Uh, so hopefully you find this helpful. Uh, I want this logic diagram to be in the AND OR format, SOP format. So I will try to use the AND gates over here, two AND gates, sure. and then I will use an OR gate over there. The output of the AND gates will feed into the OR gate and that will be my F, but as far as the three inputs are concerned, S, A, and B. Uh, I'm going to try to move this down here. A systematic approach is to draw a line for S 
A and B and to also have their complemented versions drawn. So I would have this guy, then this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, bubble and output. Copy and paste here and paste here. And just to show where things are connected, I'm gonna draw a bubble there, dot there, dot there. Right. Uh, it has also easy NAND only. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it does. Very easy NAND. Uh, now I'm ready to connect the input. So here I'm gonna. The first AND gate needs. Oh, by the way, I need the S right. This is S. This is A. This is B. Doesn't matter. What is the order? So I need S complement and I need A. For the next one, I need S and I need B. Connections and done. So that, uh, can you add nodes where they are connected? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You got to, because otherwise, where are they connected? You have to, uh, you know, some literature you will see people doing sort of this. I don't really like that. <laughs> I just like the dotted version. But that is also, uh, that, is all, that would also be correct. All right, so this is, uh, let's box this up. Because that would be the two is to one marks with three inputs, one select input, two data inputs going to an output F. That's what goes in here. All right, questions about um, things that we have been discussing so far. And clearly, like, uh, I think it was Bennett, Bennett, yeah, it, Bennett pointed out, you can also just do a, uh, you know, bubble here, bubble here, bubble here, bubble here, and you have a NAND version ready for you. Uh, don't draw nodes, make it fun for the DS. <laughs> Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about some standard, uh, not the standard. This is a multiplexer idea, essentially a switch model. So let's talk about that. Uh, multiplexers can have an enable input. That's what you're seeing over here an enable input, a bunch of select lines, and a bunch of data inputs, and one data output. Uh, they control your fate. Do they really control your fate? That wouldn't be a very ideal situation. All right. So obviously, if a multiplexer has to do its job, I have to enable it, right? So I have to enable this guy to be able to function as an enable. So that is pretty straightforward and consistent with what we have been learning about enables so far. Then we have a bunch of select lines. We have S select lines. S is the number of select lines, small s. And then we have uh, a N data sources. So you see, you have D0, D1, D2, D3, so on up to D sub N minus one. So all of those are your data sources, data inputs. Now, earlier we have been talking about data sources that could just be one bit each, but they could themselves be several bits. 
they could be each be b bits long so you select one out of n sources which is individually b bits to get to one output one out of many to get a b bit data output so you're still selecting one out of n um, but there should clearly be a relationship right so uh, there should be a relationship between uh, a small n and s can you guys think of a relationship between s which is the number of select lines and n which is the uh, number of data sources So if you have n data sources, how many select lines do you need uh, to select one out of n? n equals two raised to s. Okay, so uh, n ra n equals two raised to s is good. Uh, and in if I flip it around, I will get s equals log to the base two of n, right? It's the same relationship. I just took log base 2 on both sides. But is it really equal or less than equal, uh, greater than equal? Should I write equal or greater than or equal? Ceiling, yes. So, in order to cover uh, the option of the fact that you can have more select lines than you actually need, uh, you can say S is greater than or equal to log to the base two of N. That would be the relationship. So you're selecting one out of N where each of these N sources is B bit wide. And if you look at the multiplexer diagram in the form of switches so you have one switch over here which is the enable switch which is which will uh, 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 actually just allow things to get connected here or disconnected to put it to put the outputs in the high impedance state so that is highlighted in yellow so that's your enable the thing that is over here but look at what we are doing we are we are selecting the first bit of the first source, first bit of the zeroth source, first bit of the n minus one source, right? So this is essentially the selection of the first bit, the second bit, the bth bit that is corresponding to uh, zero, one, all the way to n minus one, right? So b here is representing the number of bits per data source while n is representing number of data sources right so how do I select D0? Well, if you want to select D0, then you have to select, pick out the first bit of D0 from here, second bit of D0 from here, and so on, all the way down to the bth bit of D0 from here. And that would give you the first bit here, second bit here, bth bit here, and that would be how you select D0. So bunch of commutators, uh, how many commutators are there? One, two, all the way down to B, right? So B such commutators to select the particular bit of B data sources. And then you have B switches to allow them to appear at the output. You guys see that? S over here is the number of select lines.
All right. Now let's talk about uh, the, the different sizes, right? So for the first one, it is very simple. Two is to one marks. Your inputs are I0 and I1. Your select line is A. If A is zero, I0 goes through to Z. And if A is one, I1 goes through to Z. That's your two is to one marks. The next level is four is to one marks, four data sources, two select lines. You're selecting one out of the four to appear at Z depending on the value of A and B. The next diagram is an 8 is to 1 marks. So 8 data inputs, 3 select lines to select 1 out of 8 data sources that can go through to Z. And of course this can be of different sizes. But these are the 3 sizes that you will see uh, pretty, pretty common uh, with what we are going to be looking at. Now let's talk about cascading muxes and you guys, we, we, we already kind of started talking about that, right? So let's see if we can design an eight is to one mux using two four is to one muxes and a two is to one mux. So essentially the idea is four inputs, I zero, I one, I two, I three go into the top four is to one mux and then four other data inputs, i4, i5, i6, i7, go into the bottom 4 is to 1 marks. Then depending on the select lines S1 and S0, which are connected to B and C inputs for both the muxes, you will be essentially selecting one from here, one from here. It's like the semi-finals, right? And then you will select one out of those two based on what the value of A is. So A becomes your most significant select, B is next, C is your least significant select to finally get to Z. So let's try to work through an example here. Uh, I want to find out what is Z when A is one, B is one and C is zero. I want to find out what is Z in that case. So if A is one, B is one, C is one, uh, C is zero, uh, A comes in later, but B one and C zero, right? B is a one, C is a zero. So if this guy is a one and this guy is a zero, what do you see over here? This guy is a one, this guy is a zero. What do you see over here? I two, yes. So one zero, S one is most significant. So you can literally read it as one and zero. That would be decimal two. That would be I two. So I two gets selected from the top four. And similarly, can you guys tell me what you select from the bottom, uh, bottom four? This is still a one, this is still a zero. I five, uh, I five. I6, yes. You select I6 from here, right? So still the second one. So you selected I2 here, I, I6 there, and then A comes in. A is a one. So which one goes through? Yes, we select I6. And this kind of gives it away, right? One, one, zero. So that would be decimal six. You are using A as your most significant select line and C as your least significant select line. So this is sort of selection uh, after selection. So you can cascade muxes. This is what the point is. Now, let's take a look at an eight input multiplexer. Now this diagram, even though it that's annoying. <laughs> you, do you mean this one is annoying? Which one is annoying? The previous one or this one? No, the inputs out of order. Oh yeah, that is okay. So you, you're talking about this one, right? This is the most significant select. 
this one is the least significant select yeah you're right yeah all right so here we have a standard eight input multiplexer so you have eight inputs you're trying to select one out of eight clearly we need three select inputs for selecting one out of eight uh, so you know based on what I see those three select lines should be right here so you have three active high select lines all over there over there three active high select inputs in a b and c and then we have of course it's a eight is to one max so we have uh eight data inputs right here d0 all the way down to d7 right eight data inputs these are all one bit each and then we have a active low enable for the chip and then the outputs are actually available both in true form and complemented form so whatever you select out of these eight will appear in both the true form and complemented form as an available output so let's try to see uh, how do you let's try to track it right let's try to track the logic expressions here so let's try to see if we can write a logic expression at this point what would that be it is getting all the AND gates are clearly getting a enable input so enable underscore L over here but that becomes an enable input over here so if that guy was a zero there right so if this guy is a zero here that guy would be a one there right so one ended with what it is getting four other inputs d0 and some form of a b and c and if you look uh here let me track this in maybe yellow and sure okay let's try to see if this works this guy is yellow there comes down here comes down there comes down there comes down there that's a complement and then for b you would go through this guy this guy this guy this guy that's b complement right there and then you can see that this will be c complement right there so it would be one and a complement and b complement and c complement and d0 What would be the next one? If you follow the same uh, sort of procedure here, it will be one and A, B complement, C complement, D1. So A has now become our least significant select and C has become our most significant select. So if A, B, C are 0, 0, 0, then what do you have? You have D0 coming in over here. Uh, D0 will be here. D0, everything else will be a 0. And then you will have a D0 complement here and D0 here. Active low output, active high output. You guys see that? So for D0 to get selected, you would need to make A, B and C, all of them 0. Uh, so let's try to ask this question here. Uh, what would be Y? What is Y? when a is 1 b is 0 c is 0 uh, that's too simple we just have that 1 1 0 all right what's that a is 1 b is 1 c is 0 what would be y 
assuming enabled 011 d3 is right and then y underscore l will be uh, d3 complement so we can write one more note here saying output available in true and complement form Here is the symbol. Active low enable, bunch of select lines, three of them, eight data inputs, outputs that select one out of eight, uh, both in true and complemented forms. So I hope that it was a little bit uh, intimidating at first, but now that you guys have gone through and looked at the patterns, it is sort of pretty straightforward I hope that is the case with you all right next we have a slightly different uh, mux this is actually a two input mux but the two inputs are themselves four bit each so let me draw the uh, diagram here the symbol for the mux here and I will base my symbol on uh, the truth table that I see on the left. I have a two is to one max. So clearly I need one select line to select one out of the two. So this is my S, this is my D zero, oh, come on, S, d0 and d1 and this is my output y when s is 0 d0 goes through and when s is 1 d1 goes through so s just needs to be one bit there is also an enable input let's also draw that uh, let's draw an enable input right here enable underscore L active low enable so if it is disabled then all your outputs are zero it's not going to depend on the input at all but if it is enabled and you have s as zero d0 goes through and look at this 1y equals 1d0 2y equals 2d0 and so on that means the first bit of d0 the second bit of d0 third bit of d0 fourth bit of d0 what that means is you are selecting one out of the two inputs but each of those inputs is a four bit input so the obviously your output also has to be four bit output but because the number of inputs are two you only need one bit select so this is uh, another standard MUX chip which is 74x157 it's a 2 input 4 bit MUX questions about this uh, and it has an active low enable yep now, if you look at the internals of this 74x157, here is your active low uh, enable input. Here is your select. Here are the first bits of both the sources, second bit of the, both the sources, third bit of both the sources, and four bi fourth bit of both the sources. Uh, where have you seen this before? Can you guys think of uh, where have you seen this kind of configuration before? S complement goes here, another input goes here, this bit and this bit. 
uh, SOP. Okay, but you see this? We have also seen it here, right? A two is to one mux. Absolutely. So depending on what the select is, one of the A or B inputs is going through. So it is selecting two from one. That's exactly what you see over here. So each of these is a two is to one mux. So there's a two is to one mux there, boxed up in red, another one, another one, another one. So there are four two is to one muxes that are inside this. Each of those is selecting the first bit, one of them, or the second bit, or the third bit, or the fourth bit. You, I meant mux. Right, but, but each one is a two is to one mux, right? And then you have another one, another four of them. Uh, so suppose you have enable underscore L as zero. And suppose you have this, that select line can either be a zero or be a one. Uh, let us say it, it is a zero right now. If it is a zero right now, uh, this becomes a one, this becomes a one, this becomes a one. right? And then that is a zero. So this becomes a one there and then flips again. And that is a zero there. So that becomes a one there. So this that would mean that this is a zero. I'm talking about the fact that S is a zero right now. So you see what happens. These are these guys, these AND gates are going to be active now. But these are going to be giving you an output of zero. Which essentially means Y1 will equal 1D0. 2y will equal 2d0, 3d0, and 4d0. So you have essentially selected the four bits of the uh, uh, d0 input. Just the internal diagram of the 74x157 chip. All right, I'm going to stop recording here, and I'm going to 